So we have human impact, devices, applications, input uh, features, time of use, dependence, and interdependence, the sociability, and the environmental impact. Everything is increasing with that exponential curve. And on the other horizontal line, we have the human capabilities. Again, we can only get 30 signals and process them at a time. We only have two hands. Our thumbs are not getting longer, despite what devices we are, we are given, and so on. And so how do we deal with that, and how do we ad address the bottleneck of human capabilities um, efficiently and pleasantly? Well, that's where uh, user experience comes in. And we can look at the official definition from the International Standards Organization, and it talks about all users' emotions, beliefs, preferences, perceptions, physical, psychological responses, behaviors, and accomplishments that occur before, during, and after use. In other words, everything. Every moment of the users learning about the product, finding it, be it in physical or online, getting it delivered, hopefully to the right address, and hopefully somebody's home to get it, unpacking it, knowing what to do, how to find the start power button, uh, starting to use it, customizing it, getting help, support. Thank God for the, uh, for, the, for the genius bar. My parents can now go and get some help. <laughs> and we're not the only line of support anymore, right? Um, this is the user experience. It's everything. And we can either design it or we can not. And then what happens? If we don't take, pay attention to that, oh yeah, and by the way, in the middle, we have this big thing now called sharing and social media, which wasn't here, I don't know, 10 years ago, right? And now, anybody who's unhappy at any point now can share that with the rest of the world. And they are much more likely to share that if they are unhappy. And so, how do we take care of that as designers? Here's another metaphor. Your user experience is, you know, you have this balloon which is your product. You can pump as much stuff as you want into it. If you don't take good care of the experience and the usability, your customer is not going to care. Your balloon is going to, might as well not exist, it's going to blow up really fast. And there's lots of examples of that and we will see some of them. So now, user experience is your product and it's also your brand. <coughs> Deal with it and get on with it and start thinking about all the parts. And this is a nice image which gives you all the different pieces of the user experience. And so all the different components, it must be useful, usable, valuable, desirable, findable, accessible, and credible. And we will see some examples of this. And actually, I'm going to play you a video of, of the first example I want to share with you of a user experience. How many of you have seen this? Couple? Okay. Yeah? Great. Okay, so uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, this is uh, two and a half minutes worthwhile. In the year 2003, iMode was the leading edge mobile um, service platform in the world. It was in Japan, and you could actually buy a pop with your cell phone, which is an amazing achievement if you think about it. Let me show you what that looked like. So uh, researchers from IDO went to Japan and they documented their experience. This is Bill Mogridge, unfortunately he just died last year. And uh, he, he founded IDO, he designed the first mouse and all kinds, he's really an amazing man. And this is from a lecture that he gave in 2007 at Stanford and you can find that on, on iTunes. And that's called buying a pop with your cell phone. Now, how did that happen? How many people were in charge of getting that product to, to life? Did anybody ever try it? No, didn't even know it still existed. Like all those people who were involved in that process, you can imagine the carriers, the billings, the everything that was behind that. 
and how it ended up like this and considered to be you know bleeding edge of, of technological progress so that's experience clearly all those people did not intend that experience okay so about around the year 2000 I think late 99 somewhere um, AOL spent I just found I was preparing for this talk I found out it's cost 300 million dollars because I don't know how many you have I have a collection of these there's a box in my house so I had at least a box worth of these devices I mean these paraphernalia floppies and CDs and every magazine you opened would they would fall out of 300 million dollars okay um, I was actually working on this on this project at the time and uh, they were doing really well they were getting a really good um, rate of people actually trying to get to the website in order to take advantage of this offer and there was a huge drop-off the number is astronomical let's just say above 95 percent of people would get there and they would drop off and so this was a problem they brought in consultants to see how do we fix it where's the problem here what was on that page I ask you that made people leave free 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 and then you get a credit card request what does that do that's a bit of a credibility problem guess what they did to try to fix that the next batch that they sent out they put a sticker on no credit card required did anybody see that sticker did anybody give it a second thought after they had gone seen the lack of credibility and abandoned everything after that was completely wasted I'm gonna give you one more example which is even more impressive have you seen this George Bush's presidential ballot yes Palm Beach okay in the year 2000 George Bush was up for election and in Palm Beach they had this ballot for people to vote in the ele presidential election so what you need to understand here is there's some some, some things are sort of uh, constraints that are non-negotiable like always in all the things that we do there are certain things you cannot change in this case the device that they were using it's a voting machine which has hardware these 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 metal spines are fixed the only thing that people who are designing the ballots can change between elections is the pieces of paper that go inside <coughs> so they're changing these papers that that stick into these metal spines and in the middle you have this card which comes through the back which is actually your ballot and you get a pointy stick and you make a hole in somewhere in the middle and that is how you vote okay everybody got that so people who are voting for George Bush came in they saw his name they punched the hole they left people who were trying to vote for Al Gore came in saw his name punched the hole some of them some of them noticed that oh there's an arrow pointing to this and they thought oh that was not the right hole let me punch this hole they punched two holes their ballot was spoiled this happened 20,000 times Pat Buchanan saw an incredible popularity rise he didn't even go to Palm Beach during that election okay and if you remember it took 37 days uh, 20 ballots almost 20 ballots had the two votes and there was 537 votes difference in the final count of 5.8 million votes so what did that cost what would it have cost to, to do a usability test on this ballot paper prototype and what did it really cost this is just one of the small numbers um, you know cost of war in Iraq um, that was a very expensive usability problem <laughs> how do we avoid that you know how do we maximize user experience well we need to balance our trinity for success involves really understanding our users understanding our business and getting the technology right and keeping those things really balanced tightly and interconnected 
and understanding the problem space. You know, what's our environment, our market, is there like legislation? What is in that space? Like the ballots had certain requirements. What are the goals of our business? What's the competition look like? What can we do with the actual technology? You know, how many billings and stores do we have to submit it to? What does that mean? And how are our users going to find the technology, the apps? Are we hitting their needs? What do they really want to do? And what does our technology need to do in order to make them happy? Keeping all of this stuff together and balanced is a challenge, but that's the only way we can actually succeed. And especially that piece, why I'm here, user experience, usability, that's what I've been doing for the past 25 years.